very good evening everyone welcome to our special presentation a discussion on what's happening with regard to our economy uh, here in Sri Lanka uh, lots of steps have been taken in order to rectify uh, the economy bring it back on track and lots of uh, aid is being given uh, from all around the world support for Sri Lanka to get back on its uh, feet uh, there are lots of countries who are helping us to do that uh, and uh, I want to get into that particular conversation especially at a time where Sri Lanka is heading towards uh, an election and how will the future be in terms of these relations and specifically the growth of our economy which is the most vital part for most Sri Lankans here. Uh, tonight I have a special guest. Uh, it is uh, the ambassador of uh, Japan to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Mizukoshi uh, Hideki, who has joined me tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the program and welcome to Adha Dirana. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, come on the program, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to a special program of Adha Dirana. Um, so now uh, Japan yes. has been a crucial friend to Sri Lanka, yes. not just during this mm -hmm. particular economic crisis, but uh, throughout uh, ancient times, yes. whenever we were going through certain periods mm. of hardships, yes. Japanese people, the uh, Japanese government, along mm. with uh, uh, Japan per se, has always been uh, a true friend yes. uh, to Sri Lanka. And right now we saw uh, during the economic crisis where you all really helped us. And recently you all came out and said that uh, apparently the loans uh, that were given, the yen loans mm. uh, that was provided by uh, Japan, the government of Japan, mm -hmm. uh, will resume and that uh, it will allow Sri Lanka to start projects uh, that was uh, committed prior. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you all to take that decision and how did you all get into that particular decision? Is it because you all think that Sri Lanka is now on the right track economically? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, well, I think it's a very crucial time for Sri Lanka and for the uh, economic relationship between Japan and Sri Lanka. Well, your question was, uh, why did we resume the disbursements of Enron at this moment? Why? Because I think um, Sri Lanka has shown that um, it has um, it has been on the right track with uh, uh, reform programs that have been agreed with IMF. Um, Sri Lanka has shown uh, um, steady uh, economic growth since the third quarter of last year. The inflation has been uh, now controlled and Sri Lanka uh, has uh, negotiated uh, this debt restructuring and uh, Sri Lanka has come into agreement with the uh, uh, official creditors committee which is dealing the debt problems with Sri Lanka and uh, Sri Lanka has uh, separately made an agreement with uh, China so uh, there is an acceptance by the international community of Sri Lanka's uh, treatment uh, uh, about Sri Lanka's uh, debt and also there was um, recognition by the IMF of Sri Lanka doing uh, what is pre prescribed by the IMF. So I think this is the right moment to resume uh, the disbursement of end loans which has been suspended because of the default of Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, but we're still in, mm -hmm. in the default state. And yes. What made you all to think, okay, still uh, that has not been rectified on that particular side, mm -hmm. but still here we are, we believe in the Sri Lankan process that is occurring with regard to its economy. Well, Sri Lanka, well, it, well we, we, it's still default, but uh, by agreeing with IMF and by agreeing with uh, our official uh, creditors committees, it has made a commitment of going into a, a right path uh, for uh, servicing the debt in the future. So uh, we have uh, uh, trusted this commitment by Sri Lanka and we made a decision to resume the uh, disbursement of end loans. How, and, much, how yes. much of loans are we talking about? So there are 11 projects which have been uh, suspended that includes a big project like Bandaranaike International Airport Terminal 
uh, some uh, uh, power transmission uh, projects, water supply project, etc. Uh, very important projects in, yeah. uh, for uh, social and economic development of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, is this uh, resumption of the loan projects, the mm. yen loan, loan projects per se, uh, is it being renegotiated or is it going as per the contract that has been entered prior to the suspension of the loans? Um, Sri Lanka and Japan has agreed on the uh, debt restructuring. So uh, this uh, loan agreement with each project will be uh, modified in accordance with the uh, Sri Lanka's agreement with the uh, uh, Official Creditors Committee. But um, we decided not to wait for the formal modification of the agreement because the sooner we start the project, the better for the people. It will create uh, jobs, it will uh, push up the GDP, so, uh, believing that Sri Lanka is going to uh, modify this loan agreement in accordance with the agreement with the OCC, we have decided to start shortcut the process and uh, start early these uh, um, stored projects. The Japanese government has also been very uh, cordial uh, when it comes to um, talking on behalf of Sri Lanka mm. to the other creditors mm. around the world. Uh, specifically, Japan has taken a lead role in that mm. to vouch for us, yes. for this country, when we were defaulted. Uh, but Japan has said, now look here, we can tell our friends mm. in Sri Lanka are working very hard in order to yeah. get back on track. Mm. So for them also to come uh, on track and help us yes. uh, to uh, just like what you all have uh, done in terms of releasing the yen loans uh, mm. back into the people. Mm. What is the need for Japan to do that? Because uh, it's not a lot of countries who would mm. help mm. Uh, in a situation like that, especially when a country is default. They don't yeah. want even to touch mm. them. Mm. Uh, so in a situation like mm. that, why does Japan come uh, into the forefront mm. and keep us, uh, you know, telling everyone mm. else <coughs> we can trust these people and they're uh, getting back on track. Mm. Well, um, actually, uh, this uh, that uh, restructuring negotiation uh, seemed very difficult at first. We, for Sri Lanka, the number one uh, creditor is uh, China. Yeah. Number two is Japan, and number three is India, and we have this uh, traditional. Uh, platform for that restructuring called the Paris Club. And they have a long practice of dealing with pro these problems. Yeah. But China and India are not members of the Paris Club. So there was no platform to negotiate these issues with all the main creditors on board. So uh, with uh, India and France, Japan initiated uh, uh, to form a platform for discussion. So that made uh, the negotiation a lot more smoother than was expected. So I think that was a very important uh, contribution of Japan. Why did we that, do that? Well, we were requested by President Wikramasinha, and uh, I have uh, relay that request to our capital, especially I know some people in the Ministry of Finance in Japan, so I specifically requested uh, supporting Sri Lanka in their negotiation. And uh, we did it because uh, we thought uh, Japan is in a good position to do that. Um, I think uh, uh, Japan was in a position to talk to all the related countries and... Uh, uh, what is the feedback yeah. you have been getting from those countries when you went and spoke on behalf of Sri Lanka? Were they also in the same mm -hmm. uh, stance as Japan uh, where you all said apparently we believe in Sri Lanka's mm -hmm. process and do they also believe the same? In the course of these long discussions there have been times when you know uh, not everybody agreed uh, very quickly, so sometimes we had to wait, we had to negotiate. 
But um, in the end, uh, all countries have uh, agreed on this uh, debt restructuring. So that's why Sri Lanka could sign MOU with uh, official creditors countries and also with China. So we, uh, they are separate agreement, uh, agreement with OCC and agreement with China, but um, we have all agreed that is a uh, fair agreement with both uh, sides. So that's why we could all accept it. Uh, in terms of the loan projects, uh, um, now one of the key projects that got stalled mm. and that uh, Sri Lanka really needs to start uh, back on track again mm. is the Bandaranaike International mm. Airport, um, the ter new terminal. Mm. Uh, because uh, if you look at all the renderings, the, yes. the shots, it, it basically transformed the entire Bandaranaike International Airport into a very high class, mm. internationally uh, competitive uh, airport mm. uh, with um, uh, certain parts of southern India, on this side Singapore. Mm. Um, how, what kind of assistance are you giving on that particular project per se? Uh, is it just giving the funds or uh, is, is there a more uh, backup uh, that will be provided to uh, when, when the constructions, mm. uh, the planning and all that happens? Or ha have you all completely changed that entire process? No, um, essentially um, we are going to uh, do the project as uh, have been point. planned and uh, perhaps um, with the time, perhaps some costs have uh, arisen, yeah. so we have to, have to make uh, some modifications, but uh, essentially uh, our plan is uh, to restart it and uh, uh, do it as, uh, as planned. And uh, we see uh, tourists to Sri, Sri Lanka booming. Uh, I'm very happy to see so many tourists coming to Sri Lanka now. So I think it is a very essential uh, project to uh, earn the foreign currency as well. So we uh, put a lot of uh, importance to it. Um, in t talking about tourism, um, mm. We don't see much of Japanese uh, mm. tourists coming into Sri Lanka. Yes. Uh, we don't have a direct flight. Uh, the the all uh, Nippon Airways is not flying directly mm. to Sri Lanka, despite the fact that there is Sri Lankan Airlines yeah. connecting them. Um, in a situation like that, especially with the mm. airport uh, new terminal being yeah. constructed by Japan, it, uh, given given that support. Mm. How are we going to tackle, you know, bringing mm. in more tourists from yeah. uh, uh, um, Japan and come and enjoy this part mm. of the world? Because mm. uh, uh, I, I don't think there is a high number of Japanese tourists mm. coming into Sri Lanka yes. at the moment. But then mm. again, during winter time, they can actually uh, uh, look at Sri Lanka mm. as a destination to come. Yes. Is there a lot of uh, uh, talk about that happening as well? Well, um, I'm encouraging Japanese people. Um, Japanese people are quite uh, cautious people, so <laughs> <laughs> during the COVID, and then yeah. uh, then uh, there was a, a financial crisis. Perhaps uh, the political instability was, uh, uh, you know, uh, reported in Japan a little bit in. Um, exaggerated ways, yeah. so uh, s some people didn't come uh, for a while. But I think uh, they are returning, and uh, there are some Japanese TV programs showing Sri Lanka. There's a, uh, a very um, popular uh, actor yeah. uh, acting in a TV ad, which is a uh, uh, for the uh, canned tea from okay. uh, Sri Lanka. And it's showing the scenes of uh, tea plantation in Waraliya. And it's very popular, people very much talking about it. And uh, in fact, a lot of my friends are coming. So <laughs> I, I think there is a good uh, prospect for the uh, future. How, how? Just, just one thing, I think, uh, the new e-visa systems, yes. uh, 
lots of people are complaining. It's a bit <laughs> difficult. So I think it's better yeah. uh, uh, to be uh, improved. Has there been yeah. any conversation <laughs> with the uh, tourism ministry, the uh, foreign <laughs> ministry, uh, stating that uh, to this fact uh, by uh, your excellency, uh, mm. saying that you know these these comes <laughs> and processes and it is actually off-putting a lot of tourists coming into Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I don't know I, I, uh, the you know real effect of that, but um, as a you know friendly advice, I would like to yeah, exactly yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's not to, only to you. There's that. a lot of yeah. uh, other uh, countries have been telling the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this entire process is not exactly uh, tourism friendly. Let's yeah. say. Um, uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, this is a special presentation. I'm in conversation with His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan to Sri Lanka, Mizukoshi Hideki. Um, this is our special presentation. Video. Welcome back, everyone, uh, to a special presentation. I'm in conversation with uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan, Misiko Shihideki. Uh, we've been talking about the debt restructuring process, the Japanese government's assistance mm. uh, to Sri Lanka in this economic crisis, mm. and also the resumption of yen loans. Uh, mm. One of the first countries that actually uh, announced to say that uh, they are resuming uh, to uh, the projects, the projects which are very mm. vital, because uh, as you know, since 2022, since the crisis came mm. in uh, all the projects, all the development projects was completely standstill. Uh, there was no assumption of that and now the Japanese government has assured saying that they will provide the loans uh, that was initially agreed and we will see a lot of projects coming back into the foreign, especially the Bandaranaik International Airport, uh, uh, the new terminal that will uh, uplift the entire Bandaranaik International Airport to be a competitive airport with the, uh, with the region. And also um, there are lots of uh, power projects uh, that Japan is assisting and also um, there was a conversation about a monorail and I'll ask uh, from the Japanese ambassador about that as well. So uh, with regard to um, opportunities in Japan for our business community, yes. uh, specifically workers mm. uh, who is looking to go out there and work. Most of the focus is towards the Middle East mm. or now a little bit towards yes. the West. Mm -hmm. But we don't see a lot going maybe to South Korea, mm. yes. Mm. What is the assistance that Japan is giving in terms of like, you know, opening the job market mm -hmm. for Sri Lankans mm. to go there and work? Yes. Now, uh, Japan is is uh, changing. Um, Japan's labor market has been traditionally quite perhaps closed, but uh, with the aging population and shortage of labor, uh, we are trying to open the labor market. This and is after COVID? Mm, not only, well, it has started before, but uh, uh, after COVID even more. And, uh, Especially, uh, we need a lot of people uh, for uh, as caretakers, uh, caregivers uh, for old people, uh, because um, the percentage of old people in Japan is so high, yeah. and uh, because of that, also there are shortage of uh, construction workers, uh, building cleaners, or people for the service of food and hotelry. So there are a lot of need uh, uh, for workers. And we, uh, Sri Lankan people uh, are very popular in Japan. So um, I see more and more business people from Japan who are looking for uh, opportunities to hire Sri Lankan people. If, if there is someone watching in terms of, you know, how to get this process, uh, you mm. know, to start and, okay, I want to go work in Japan, what, mm. what exactly, where should they be looking at? Well, there's um, um, one category of work permit in Japan is called uh, SSW, Specified Skilled Workers Program. So if you want to go to Japan with that program, you need to uh, uh, pass some exams. One is an exam for the skill, and one, the other is an exam for Japanese language. So um, you need some level of uh, Japanese language, and uh, we want to um, 
you know, support these uh, Japanese language education in Sri Lanka as well because it's uh, now because of the need uh, uh, for uh, learning Japanese language to work in Japan, the uh, pe the number of people taking the test for Japanese language proficiency is uh, growing. Mm -hmm. The students who are taking Japanese language is growing. I ha I hear that is the uh, number one foreign language after English. Yeah. So uh, I, I, it's a very welcoming thing for us. So we would like to support that. In term, not, not only just uh, um, skilled migrant workers, but there is a lot of um, effort being done by a lot of Sri Lankan students to go mm. there and learn yes. uh, in, in, in Japan. Mm. Uh, and universities are also having some kind of a linkage with Sri Lankan universities. Mm. Mm. How is that process? Like uh, recently we had an internal discussion in, in our country where we mm. said uh, we have to open the uh, university uh, mm. uh, towards, you know, for international universities to come here mm. and actually establish their mm. own uh, universities yeah. so that uh, there would be international students mm. also coming here okay. uh, but right now there's a lot of students from Sri Lanka going outside mm. um, is Japan a hub for that as well and is there like opportunities mm. there well there are some uh, scholarship programs to study in Japan uh, there uh, there are academic programs and also uh, there are some programs for the government officials to study in Japan we have just uh, done a send-off ceremony for the, yeah. this kind of program uh, on Friday. But also, uh, you mentioned about the international universities establishing in Sri Lanka. There is one university uh, which is uh, teaching Japanese language and also IT skills. Hmm. A university which is, is um, uh, a kind of a, a joint venture between Japan and Sri Lanka. It's called uh, LNBTI, Lanka Nippon Biztech Institute. It's a relatively new university, but if you study there, uh, you can study Japanese in Sri Lanka, and at the same time, you can acquire IT skills, and after that, you will have the opportunities to work in IT companies in Japan. So I think that's a very good model. Yeah. So um, we would like to have uh, that kind of uh, uh, universities uh, in Sri Lanka. Another market that is very popular here in Sri Lanka is the vehicle market, mm. uh, where uh, lots of uh, vehicles from uh, Japan is here, mm. especially Honda, Toyota, mm. all these big brands yeah. are here in Sri Lanka, and we keep importing a lot of, mm. uh, I mean, obviously all the vehicles are being imported. Mm. Uh, but recently, because of COVID, we stopped mm. the importation. Um, yeah. Is there a conversation occurring with the Japanese government asking the Sri Lankan government, let's open up the uh, the trade uh, and, and, and bring in these vehicles back into uh, the country? Because, uh, I mean, if you mm. if there is a new vehicle that mm. has been introduced in uh, Japan, within a few weeks it's here <laughs> back mm. in Sri Lanka because it's very popular a lot yes, of Japanese vehicles. Yes. So uh, in a situation like that, uh, is able, what exactly is the process like uh, the uh, your embassy? Is yeah, doing? I'm very happy to see a lot of Japanese cars running in Sri Lanka. They are very popular <laughs> in Sri Lanka. But uh, because of this uh, financial crisis, uh, there's uh, import restrictions. So um, I understand that uh, you cannot uh, import uh, new uh, vehicles uh, at this moment. But uh, you will be opening up uh, yeah. from uh, commercial vehicles. Yes. Um, because I think uh, Sri Lanka's restriction is uh, due to this um, IMF program and uh, your uh, uh, effort to save foreign currency. We are not protesting to it, <laughs> but uh, as you open up the uh, vehicle market, we hope that the Japanese cars are coming back to you know, Sri Lanka. Uh, in terms of uh, promoting Sri Lanka as a destination towards uh, investment in Japan, mm. uh, is that like an effort? I mean, it has to be done by our Sri Lankan embassy uh, there in, in Tokyo. Um, uh, I know uh, 
by you know been speaking to the uh, minister of foreign affairs that there is an effort to attract investors from japan to come here mm -hmm. and work, um, do uh, work here in sri lanka mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what is the opportunity that uh, there they y'all see that sri lanka could be a destination for mm -hmm. japanese investors to come in well, I think um, one thing is that um, Sri Lanka is um, next to India, which is a huge. huge market, huge growing market. There are lots of Japan, new Japanese companies investing in India right now. So with uh, Sri Lanka more connected to India, uh, with infrastructure and with uh, uh, you know, FTAs, then I think uh, you will have more chances uh, for not only Japan, but uh, other foreign com companies coming to Sri Lanka to invest not only for Sri Lanka market, but this large, growing South Asia market. Is that a conversation happening on, on that particular front in Japan? Uh, telling Japanese investors, look at Sri Lanka, it's a possible. Not, not yet. I'm telling it uh, to s Japanese businessmen who are visiting Sri Lanka. <laughs> but uh, still, Sri Lanka is still in the, not out of the woods, it's still in the financial uh, crisis. What would, what would so, so it's uh, more in the future. Uh, but, but one thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, one obstacle uh, for Japanese investors to come to Sri Lanka is, um, is um, a kind of transparency okay. of uh, procedures, administrative procedures, and uh, more bluntly saying, you know, corruption. Corruption. Yeah. So those things will prevent Japanese investors. There's a lot of uh, effort made by the government to, uh, you know, stop curb corruption. Yeah, that's like very that. important. Very important, and we would like to support it very strongly. And yeah. is that is that uh, one of the reasons that we see less Japanese investors coming into this part of the world or this uh, to our country, specifically because is that the impression that is out there in Japan, mm -hmm. saying that investing in Sri Lanka could be a little bit of a dodgy thing? Mm, maybe so. It it's not seen really as a investment friendly country. Like um, I think I I I saw in the uh, Financial Times today comparing uh, Sri Lanka and Vietnam and how mm. Vietnam is attracting more investments than Sri Lanka in these uh, ten years. So Vietnam is doing a policy which is very friendly to foreign investors. Uh, but Sri Lanka has not been able to do it at least consistently. So I, th I think this IMF reform is a very good opportunity for Sri Lanka to transform. Like India, India has gone through uh, IMF reform in the 1990s. Yeah. After that, it has transformed into a more market-oriented economy and it has grown so fast after, after that. So, so it is vital that we keep uh, on this IMF path, is it? Mm. Uh, uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, I mean, uh, conversation with His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan to Sri Lanka, uh, His Excellency Mizukoshi Hideki. We've been talking about uh, Japan and Sri Lanka relations uh, and exactly, um, you know, revamping this economy that we are currently trying to get back on track. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to our special presentation. I'm in conversation with His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan to Sri Lanka, Ms. Koshi Hideki. We've been talking about Sri Lanka-Japan relations. Uh, Ambassador, um, Sri Lanka and Japan, the relations, even though we know diplomatic relations have been only a very uh, shorter period of time, but we know since ancient times, our kings and queens have been in relations with Japan. And, and uh, prior uh, to the program, you were telling me that uh, one of the Japanese em emperors visited Sri Lanka on his way to Europe so that those relations have been very crucial and vital uh, and continues to be uh, the same and then 
one of the things is we remember, I think a lot of people remember Oshin as yes. something that we grew mm. up, uh, a cultural exchange mm. of uh, uh, um, efforts uh, from Japan. In terms of uh, recently, our foreign minister, uh, mm. Ali Sabri, was in Japan, mm. I think in, in this month. Yes. And uh, uh, what exactly was that, uh, the purpose of that? Uh, I, I understand he went and uh, spoke to a lot of business people. Was mm. there anything uh, uh, positive coming out of that? Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, we have invited uh, Foreign Minister Ali Sabri uh, for official visit to Japan. So we have made a program not only for meetings, but we had made uh, arranged uh, uh, visit, for example, to the Peace Museum of Hiroshima, mm. where there was an atomic bomb. So it was um, an effort uh, for us to uh, deepen the understanding by the Sri Lankan foreign minister on Japan. But uh, Ali Sabri has a very good experience in the past in Japan. He, when he was young, when he was a law student, he went to Japan uh, as a leader of a Sri Lankan group delegation in the World Youth Ship Program. Okay. So uh, youth delegations of various countries go on the same ship and uh, uh, do a trip. And they came, uh, he came to Japan as a young Rose student. And he said he stayed in a Japanese family uh, for several weeks. And uh, the first time I met him, when I came here in 2021, and he was just minister, he mentioned it. And his, it was his first foreign country to visit, and it was his first experience in Japan. And uh, he learned many things from that experience. So when we invited him to Japan, I uh, wanted to arrange something that uh, you know he Maybe could uh, you know go it, uh, yeah. again. So uh, he, the, when we invited him, the first thing he said was he, he wants to meet the people where he stayed in Japan 20 years ago. We didn't know who they were, but we, we searched all the files <laughs> and we, we found the contact of the family and they were there in the same old house, house. in a rural uh, place in Japan. So we took him there and uh, it was a dramatic reunion with the, uh, the, fa the, fa the family. So um, it was really um, a good moment uh, to reflect how, you know, these exchange programs and people to people exchange is important for our long lasting friendship. Absolutely. Mm. If we uh, take from that particular point on, mm. what exactly is, uh, uh, as your uh, leadership here as the ambassador of uh, Japan to Sri Lanka and from one of your efforts to beyond the future, mm. what exactly, you know, what kind of relations are you all hoping to have uh, in terms of, is there going to be a lot of financial effort in order to get Sri Lanka mm. to stand on its own two feet, not keep taking loans after loans mm -hmm. after loans, mm -hmm. but to be a very financially stable country mm. or um, there's a lot of exchange mm. we can do in mm. terms of students, in terms uh, of workers, yep. the job market mm. in uh, um, Japan is shrinking mm. because mm. of the aging population. Mm. There is an opportunity there. Yep. Um, is there a quota provided to Sri Lanka or wh wh what exactly is the hopes for the future? Well, um, I would like to um, strengthen the bonds between Japan and Sri Lanka on all, all fronts, on economic cooperation, on people's people-to-people -people exchange, cultural uh, relationship, uh, or political relationship between the leaders of the countries. But on, especially on economic cooperation, uh, we would like to make it a sustainable relationship. For that, you know, not just only aid, but I think investments are crucial. So from that point of view, as I told you, I th would like ask Sri Lanka to make its market more friendly to foreign investors and its policies consistent and trustworthy uh, so that uh, more Japanese companies can uh, do their business comfortably in Sri Lanka. And that will naturally 
uh, lead to more Japanese people living in Sri Lanka, more ja uh, exchanges. Looking Japan, at uh, Sri, Sri Lanka's opportunities mm. here, looking at our our job market, our our uh, ability to mm. uh, uh, produce certain products, mm. what do you see as an opportunity for is investors in Japan to come here? Like, what kind of what are the areas that think okay, these guys mm. can actually have a better relations in Sri Lanka? Mm. I, I know for a fact that everybody can't come, mm. but there could be certain sectors that would be uh, beneficial to. Mm. Sri Lanka and we can actually go pitch to them saying this is a destination that you need to look into. Mm. Well, um, for example, if you look at the companies which uh, have invested in, in Sri Lanka and are successful, look at Noritake for example. Yeah. So uh, Noritake first invested uh, in Sri Lanka because there is some good material for the porcelain. But they said uh, they no longer use uh, the material from Sri Lanka, they are importing it. They are still here because of the very good uh, workforce, uh, workforce which is well trained and uh, do the work very precisely. So I think these um, like manufacturing companies who need a uh, because uh, uh, yeah. in the past, like I think around 20 years back, there were a lot of electronic companies, Japanese electronic companies mm. here in Sri Lanka, but no, no longer we see them uh, see. part of, mm. uh, for, you know, manufacturing anything here in Sri Lanka. Mm. And then you have uh, uh, the medicine, uh, the, the uh, mm. pharm pharmaceutical side of things. Mm. Um, there are areas like, like, what do you think, like, I understand what you mentioned right mm. now, saying that the workforce, the training is quite mm. important mm. because a lot of, when you don't have the proper workforce, mm. nobody wants to come mm. and start training them and mm. then start uh, producing. Yeah. Uh, so what are the areas that you think that Sri Lanka should be focusing on in terms of getting the workforce uh, mm. up to standard uh, mm. towards uh, global markets? Mm. Well, mm, quite difficult question. <laughs> 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 well, I think, um, there are many fronts. Well, garment, Sri Lanka is already successful, that's uh, one thing, but uh, you can perhaps uh, diversify uh, the industries. And also agro-industry. I think Sri Lanka uh, produces a lot of agricultural uh, products and also aquaculture, but um, they are still not very well marketed, perhaps. Mm like uh, uh, packaging and uh, the building a code change to maintain the quality, uh, things like that. I think they are now only looking to the domestic market, but I think there is a, a possibility for the uh, exports as well. Do you think the products that we have can be globally competitive? I think, I, I, I think, but um, um, you need a um, good environment for entrepreneurs yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, to make the best of uh, what you produce and, uh, yeah, good logistics. Uh, you have a good Basically logistics. Basically the infrastructure set up. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Ambassador, uh, do you think or how do you see Sri Lanka's uh, future in terms of coming out of this economic crisis? Mm. Are, you, are you confident that we can get to the point where we were prior or beyond that? Mm. Well, we, I'm very confident uh, if you uh, go along uh, this uh, policy of uh, reforms uh, in accordance with IMF, uh, I mentioned the case of India. South Korea also has succeeded. Uh, uh, they have got better out of IMF uh, reforms. So I hope Sri Lanka will do the same. So in, uh, in five years, I think uh, Sri Lanka's economy, I would like to see it uh, booming and uh, a lot of Japanese companies coming to Sri Lanka. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Japan to Sri Lanka, Mizuko Shihideiki.
my appreciation, sir, yes. for coming on the program and actually speaking to us and sharing your ideas, and especially um, more so as a Sri Lankan citizen. I thank the uh, people of uh, Japan for the support they've been continuously yes. giving to us uh, at, at a time when, when we were going through such hardships. And, and there uh, we know that um, uh, uh, absolutely when you're going through a crisis and the people who help you at that time are the real friends yes. um, that you can, act, uh, you can be and count on. Uh, thank you once again, okay. Nasa, uh, for being here. I appreciate that. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. Thank you very much for okay. joining us on this special presentation. I'll be back again with a similar uh, program like this to bring you a different view. Thank you for joining. Have a good night.